Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create uh, text to image art worthy shares using the best AI for creators. So to start us off, first I'm gonna talk uh, a little bit about a text to image AI at a high level so we kinda understand what we're using and how we can use it. Uh, then I'm gonna go through the three kind of phases that I think creators are gonna get the most value um, out of using this AI to actually create art and share worthy images. So the first is the explore phase, which is to really understand what are the capabilities of this AI you're using and how you might use it to get the image you want. Second one is to actually generate uh, so that you're like iterating towards that final image. And the third one is how to actually export. So how, now that you found like an image that you want, how can you actually turn it into something that's high resolution, high quality, uh, something you could actually share on your feed or something like that. So let's start with just a very brief high level idea of what text to image AI is. So at the highest level, basically we're gonna input some text and we're gonna get an output image. So here's an example uh, using this AI that I'm gonna show you today, uh, where I just say purple blossom made of crystal and we get this kind of nice high quality image of that. Now ideally it's just as simple as this, but in reality, uh, we are going to have to really iterate with the AI to understand what kinds of things it outputs for different prompts and craft our prompts accordingly to get that specific image we want. But to keep your hopes up, uh, a lot of the images that these AIs are producing are really, really good and a lot of them are even winning prizes. So here's that viral article from uh, this past week where some art using this AI that I'll show you today um, actually won uh, some art contests. And so let's talk about the AI we're gonna be using today. Um, we're gonna be using Midjourney. I think this is the best AI for creators for a lot of reasons, um, and it did win an award, so you know, that's good. Um, the things I really like about this one are that it's one, really high quality, uh, has really good tooling for how to actually iterate and create a good image. And then once you have an image that you've uh, found that you like, it has really, really good enhancement and remastering features that I haven't seen in any other AI uh, even close to as good as this one. The one iffy thing about this, this is a bit of a clunky interface, but it does have some advantages, which I'll kind of show you as we get into the generation page. Okay, so I think the first thing that you should do when you're trying to use an AI like this is to really explore and understand what it's capable of. And the reason this is, is because we're not really sure what the AI is thinking about different words and stuff. And so the more we can understand like the outputs and what prompts led to that, the better we're gonna be at actually producing prompts that produce the image that we actually want. Now, I think the best AI services out there that are doing text to image all have uh, a way to explore these prompts, particularly the best ones that have been created. So you can kind of use those as inspiration. And we'll use this as a, a launching point for uh, the demo of this. Okay, so here I am at that link, um, and there's a basically a button for the community showcase, and we can kind of see what like the best um, images are that people have voted on or seen, um, and we can kind of get like a pretty broad idea of what the things are capable of. This one has really good outputs, um, both like from an art uh, standpoint or even from like hyper realistic um, kind of stuff. But the really cool part about this showcase that I haven't seen in most other AIs as well, is that it actually shows you the prompt that was used to create this. And so let's say we like this um, ink version, we can actually just come here and see like what things did they use to make it look like ink, and we can use that in our own versions to create stuff in the same style. So if you're just getting started with this AI or any AI, I would highly recommend doing that to start, just to see what it's possible and to give you a good place of inspiration to start from. So now that we have this, how do we actually do the generation? Well, let's jump over into the Discord and talk about how we actually generate from this. So Midjourney is weird in that basically it doesn't have its own creation UI. It all happens through Discord. And this is kind of the clunky part. Basically, they have different bots that are listening to the messages, looking out for a specific prompt you can type. Um, and this will trigger the actual generation of your image. Now, if we go back to the explore phase, it is cool because you can kind of see like what people are doing in real time and maybe get some inspiration that way. Um, but it is more typing than others, so uh, take it as you will. So to actually generate your images, you're probably gonna wanna start out in one of these newbies rooms. Um, I have a subscription, so I'm gonna go down to one of these general rooms here and kind of show you how to do this. So the prompt we're gonna use is slash imagine. 
Um, and then we can just kind of hit a uh, spacebar here. And let me make this a little bigger, I suppose. Um, and then we can tell it that the prompt that we want. So let's say a vending machine on Mars. And we'll type that. And we can see that the bot is starting up here. It might take a little while, um, but we'll come back when it's done. Okay, it's been about a minute and the job just completed. So we're gonna have to scroll through these to find the one that I created, that vending machine on Mars. And this is kind of, again, where the clunkiness happens. You can see a lot of cool creations by others, but it's not the most intuitive and it takes a while. So here's that vending machine on Mars. We can see it's a vending machine, it's on Mars. Um, so yeah, that's text to image and how to use it. Now, if you start using Midjourney, you're probably gonna get really sick of this like scrolling all the time to find the images you created and stuff like that. And so my first hot tip for you is to not use this uh, main channel here, but you can actually use one of Discord's threads. Um, so we can create one here. I'll create it like Cami 2209.13 or something. Um, and this is just for me. Uh, other people can see this, it's not private. Um, but it keeps all of my creations in one place. So let's do uh, imagine again. Let's do vending machine on Mars. And we can see that everything that this bot is gonna do is right in my private thread, so I don't have to go scrolling for it. Um, so highly recommend you do this if you're trying to use uh, Midjourney. Okay, so now that we've created uh, our vending machines on Mars, um, how do we actually export it and share it? So. This is just Discord, this is just an image, so you can just click into this and you know copy image or save image as or whatever you wanna do. Um, but this is like very pixelated uh, and you know it's very small resolution, so it's probably not gonna be that useful to share to everyone. They're just gonna be like, what is this blurry picture? Um, so this goes into the good tooling that a mid-journey has. So let's say I really like this first image and I want to probably share that one. Well, we can use this the U's to upscale and the V's to take a variation. Um, and so it's one, two, three, four. And so clicking U1 will upscale this one. And just to show you, let's say I kind of like this image, but I don't love it. Um, what I can do is click the V here and it's gonna create a variation. And so this goes a little bit into how like text to image AIs work. Basically, uh, they take your prompt and they go to create something, but there's also internal variation um, using like a random seed, which means that there's also like billions of different versions of what could be created from this specific prompt. And what we're doing every time we, we tell the bot to run a prompt, it's going to run that on a seed. So we could rerun this prompt a ton of times uh, and get different results. The V is basically like, we'll run the prompt, but now run it starting with this image. And so the difference here is that instead of just looking at all things that might fit this prompt, we're now only creating prompts that kind of look like this. And there's also billions of different versions of those. So I'll give you an example when these bot is done creating them. Okay, so the bots are finished and here is the variation one. And so we can see that like from the original one, there's this like circle thing and like these like things with trenches or whatever. And basically it's taken that and it's like, well, let's keep the circle thing here and let's see what might be in the foreground in those trenches. And so it's creating a bunch of different versions that are kind of like the one we started with. Uh, you can compare with these, which are, are much different than that one. Um, these are much similar, more similar. Okay, so we've got this one and it's much higher like resolution, much higher quality. Um, and what I'd recommend doing is just to go ahead and upscale to max um, instead of just leaving it at this middle one and we'll wait for this to finish and then come back. Okay, so we've upscaled to max and we can kind of see that like if we click in here, it's a little bit blurry. Uh, if we click in here, it's a little bit better. Um, and then if we open the original, we should get the full sized one. Uh, now what you'll notice is that every time you upscale, there is gonna be a little bit of AI fragmentation that's kind of added here. And that's just because we're running this through another AI to upscale. So if you have this and you're really happy with it, another thing I would really recommend you doing is clicking this remaster button here. And so the remaster button is anything that they added in that is kind of like the versioning, but it's gonna be much more, much higher integrity towards the original image. So especially if you found something that you really, really like, it's worth doing the remaster to see if like a slight variation makes it that much better for you. And I'll show you what this looks like uh, when it's done processing. So now it's done processing and we can see that 
uh, it kind of took this thing, um, but it did different variations on what it is. And one of the cool things about remaster is if you look at it, usually it will try to get rid of a lot of the kind of like AI fragmentation things that are like wispy, smoky stuff and make it look a lot more uh, real, I guess. Um, and so let's say I really like this one. These are like, I don't know, basketball planets or something. Uh, and so we can start uh, upping this and we can do the exact same thing over again, um, which is really cool. Okay, with that, you should be equipped to make some pretty high quality images using Midjourney AI. Uh, if you have any questions about AI or text to image or anything like that, let me know and I'll try to answer them. Give me a follow and uh, I'll see you next time.